Hey, I want to thank you all for your interest and enthusiasm about this series of essential woodworking jigs. As the collection is growing, I decided it would be helpful to keep all of the plans and instructional videos in one place so that you can refer back to them whenever needed. They're all free over at myshopjigs.com. Of course, I'll still be posting all of these videos here on YouTube. One of the most common cuts to make on a table saw is a cross cut. Unfortunately, the only tool for making cross cuts that comes with a table saw is a miter gauge. On a lot of saws, you get something like this. And don't get me wrong, you can usually get by with these and make cross cuts that are good enough for most projects, but there are some problems with miter gauges. First, they're usually just a little too small and can leave a lot of the wood unsupported. Attaching an extension fence can help. It will support the left side of your board and also lets you attach a stop block for making repeated cuts. But the board you use for the extension might not be perfectly straight and can be somewhat flimsy. Plus, you're only supporting one side of the cut. Another problem you might have encountered is trying to cut a board that's just a bit too wide to fit on the table. So you have to pull the miter gauge almost completely out of its slot, introducing a lot of instability and leading to a sloppy cut. But the biggest issue with miter gauges is accuracy. Since they're designed to be rotated to various angles, they might not always lock back in at that perfect 90 degrees for a cross cut. A big improvement would be an aftermarket miter gauge like this one from Incra. It has a built-in extendable fence and a pretty good system for locking the miter back into place. But again, you're only supporting one side of the cut. And finally, your cuts can be affected by any play that might be in the miter slot since it only uses one of your saw's slots. A crosscut sled addresses all of these concerns and is one of the most useful accessories you can make for your saw. With a well-calibrated crosscut sled, you can be assured of perfect 90 degree cuts every time without having to adjust anything. It has two runners, one for each miter slot to assure that there's no wiggle. Both sides of your workpiece are supported and its zero clearance kerf gives you much cleaner cuts with less tear out. You can safely cut small pieces without fear of them dropping down into your saw. And the best part is that you can clamp a stop block anywhere along the fence on either side of the blade for making repeated cuts. Now, of course, you're still gonna wanna keep your miter gauge for making, well, miter cuts, but you're gonna be surprised how often you use your sled and how well it takes the guesswork out of making perfect 90 degree cuts every time. Like any woodworking jig, there's a million different kinds of crosscut sleds with different features. I've made these in all different sizes, but I find this size is at least a pretty good size for most table saws. You can easily modify yours to any size you like based on this design. One of the most common features you might want to consider adding is an adjustable stop block. I've included these before, but honestly, I find that a clamp and a scrap of wood works just as easily, just as quickly, and is just as accurate. As with all of the projects in this series, I've kept this sled as simple and basic as possible to encourage new woodworkers to make one. I want to start by making the runners that are going to fit into the slots. This needs to be a really good fit, not too tight, not too loose. You don't want any wiggle in there but you also don't want it so tight that you can't slide the sled through so it's just going to take a little bit of trial and error until you can get two good runners. There's a number of materials you can use to make runners. You could use plastic or what I like to use is quarter inch plywood. You could also use hardboard or masonite. That works really well too. What I don't recommend using is solid lumber. If you use any solid wood it's likely to expand and contract slightly due to changes in humidity and it'll make the sled really sticky and hard to slide or too loose. This is the fit I've got right here. If you have one of these T tracks like this, you don't want it to go all the way down to where it might go in there because when I'm using this sled, it's actually going to be up here flush with the top. It feels like I could go a little bit looser. I think I'm gonna slide it over just a hair.
Yeah, that's a lot better. I recommend using three quarter inch plywood for the sled. I'm making mine 16 by 30. I'm gonna glue the runners to the bottom of the sled. To do that, I need to drop them into their slots, but they need to be raised up slightly proud of the surface of the table. So sometimes I've stacked coins in there. You can use like folded sheets of paper or cardboard, or I'm gonna use some nuts this time. With those in place, I wanna lower my blade all the way down out of the way. Next, you need to decide where you wanna position your sled on those runners, whether you want them right in the middle or off to one side or the other. I think there's kind of advantages to the different ways. If it's over this way, it's gonna give you a lot more support for longer boards. Most likely that would be on this side, but you won't have a whole lot of room on this side for clamping stop blocks. You might wanna put it over this way because you have a lot more room for clamping stop blocks and that's probably where you would put those. But for this cross-cut sled, I think it just makes most sense, the most sense just to kind of split the difference and put it right in the middle. So what I wanna do is bring my fence over so that I can square it up. So on this sled, that's about nine inches on each side of those runners. So I can make sure it's squared up and lock that in place. Another thing you'll notice is that I cut these runners down to size that are a little bit longer than the depth of this board. That's just gonna make it so I don't have to try to line up those edges right with the edge of this board. I'll cut those to size once they're in place. So for now, all I need to do is put a little bit of glue on these runners. I really don't wanna put so much on that it squeezes out all over the table saw. I'll line this up with the fence and then just carefully drop it straight down onto those runners. Like that. I'll put some weight on it to hold it in place while the glue dries. Okay, the glue dried for a little over an hour. I can take this off. Those look good. And remove my nuts. Oh, ha, ha, ha. And now I can test this out. Whenever I've made these in the past, I've always reinforced these runners with a few small screws, but I really don't think that's necessary. As long as you've got a good glue bond going all the way across those runners, they should be fine. So I'm not gonna bother with any screws on them. Of course, if you want to, go right ahead. Use any kind of a handsaw to cut the ends of these runners flush. I'll use three quarter inch plywood to cut out four two and a half inch wide strips for the front and back fences. I'll glue these together in pairs. I should be able to clamp both pairs together at once. With both of those fences dry, I just need to clean up these edges a little bit and square them off. I'll just shave a little bit off of each side. I'll cut these down to the same width as the sled. Now I can drop the sled into place and just make a partial cut. About halfway through the board is fine. I need to remove my riving knife just for a moment. Now I wanna raise this blade up to there. And I'll glue this rear fence into place. I'm not really sure if this is called the rear fence or the front fence, I guess whatever you want it to be. 
I'm going to call it the rear fence and call the one closest to me is the front fence. So this one, this rear fence doesn't really have to be square to the blade, doesn't really matter, but I like to square it up anyway. So I'll just use a square and use my blade as a guide. The thing you want to make sure that you're doing here is that the blade isn't touching one of the teeth. It might be sticking out and getting it offset. So make sure that it's not hitting the teeth. And then I can line this up. I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute or so just to let that glue grab. Then I can clamp and screw it in place. Honestly, I'm not really sure why I square up this rear fence. It doesn't make any difference at all. Save yourself the trouble. Just glue it in place and then you can cut through it. I just want to wait long enough so when I put these clamps on, it doesn't slide around. The important thing is whenever you put screws on the bottom of this, make sure that they're countersink, that they're not sticking up. Now it is critical that this front fence is exactly 90 degrees to the blade. That's the whole point of a crosscut sled. So this one doesn't get glued in place in case you need to make adjustments on it. With that back fence installed providing support for this split, I can extend that cut closer to the front. I want this front fence to be set forward about two inches. The, again, the exact measurement doesn't really matter. And I'll square it up with the blade just like I did the back one. And at this point, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's pretty close. And I'll just draw a line where I want that to go. Now what I can do is bring this whole thing back off the edge of the table, keeping this exactly where it was. And if it moves a little bit, I can just line it back up with that line. And I'm not gonna glue this down. I'm gonna install a single screw on one side just to act as a pivot so that I can adjust it. Now I can pull this back forward and raise my blade up a little bit. Like that. Now I'll be able to use my square, again, making sure that I'm not resting on the teeth and square this up. With that carefully slid back, making sure I haven't moved it, I wanna clamp this in place. Now I can slide this forward and double check that I've got it square. Spot on. So if it's not square, you've got plenty of room there to add additional screws. Just remove the one screw, make a minor adjustment and add an additional screw. Another thing you might consider is making more of a slot on this plywood base rather than just a hole. And then that'll give you enough room to maneuver the fence back and forth a little bit as needed. And then I like to put a couple of additional screws making sure that I've got some close to that slot to help provide support there. I'm cutting out these strips to make a couple of safety features. I'll cut this strip down into three pieces using my crosscut sled. I just set up a stop block here. So what these are gonna be used for is to 
kind of keep my fingers safe. When this blade goes all the way forward, I don't like the way that blade sticks out, especially once it cuts all the way through. So these will just kind of remind me to keep my fingers out of the way and just let the blade get buried in those. I'm gonna screw these into each other rather than glue them just in case I ever need to replace or adjust the fence. And finally, I'll screw these two strips into place. These two strips give the sled a little extra support and they serve as a reminder where to keep my fingers. And finally, I like to apply some paste finishing wax to the runners and the bottom of the sled just so that it slides a little bit easier. You just wipe this stuff on and then let it dry for about 10 minutes and then buff it off. 